So good evening, uh, good afternoon. Um, yeah, I am um, very proud to be invited here, of course. Um, and I always start out a little nervous, but it will, it will probably break. So first of all, I'm here to, I, I get invited to talk about my failures because it seems to be interesting. And it's probably also because it's a lot of, it's a lot of the nature of, of startups and, and this whole new developing, the development of, of, of digital services. First of all, I would like you to take out your phone and change to the other network here. Um, if you can see the Wi-Fi network, where is that? Mm. Yeah, you can go on the OpenXO. There's an OpenXO Wi-Fi network. So if you go on there, it will ask you to, instead of connecting with these crazy codes, you should be able to connect with, with Facebook and in that manner get into the, the network. And, and that's, that's one of these stupid small things that we've been, I've been wait, I think I've been playing with for, for a couple of years that is now going out to 700 hotels all over the world where you start with a stupid idea, nobody believes in it, and then suddenly you have, you have a tool that makes a lot of sense if you do the right packaging. So you, you connect like this. Um, yeah, let's hope it works. And then you get into the, the hotel XO, we, we call it here. Let's see if we can get on. Hmm. Would be nice if it worked. Um, the idea is, of course, that when you connect with Facebook, first of all, you have a, you have a, I mean, I, I believe that Facebook is better than a passport because you have the, the data over, over time and you have the, the profile. Um, now, of course, this doesn't really work. Let's see. Maybe it's hiding between this. Um, okay, fuck that. Let's, let's change to the presentation. This will apparently not work right here. Um, yeah, so basically, I think I, I said it. Let's see, what, what direction is this going? So yeah, you're welcome to follow me on Twitter. So I'm Morton, I'm the father of four. I'm an inventor and, and innovator in some ways. I advise a lot of very interesting people. I love marketing. I, I, love to, I love jobs and I love to create jobs and I love to create sexy jobs and kill boring jobs. And, and I think that's, that's been part of, of my whole story. And right now what we're, and I'm spending most of my time on and why I'm getting more and more weird is that we're structuring a lot of dead boring business processes. I founded 100 and plus 120 companies with within my different groups. I made tons of money. I was very lucky to, to support Nicholas and Janus when they, when they started Skype and they had no money. So I paid for their apartments and I helped a little bit with the marketing because I came from marketing. I sold my first advertising company when I was 26. And I also managed to um, fuck up everything in 2008 and lose everything I had, um, which was probably healthy because there should be a rule against kids, 27 year olds becoming millionaires. Um, but the, in 2008, I had this uh, very few emails and I had a lot of time to think. So somehow I also had to make some money. So somehow I, I got hit by this bug of, of, of structured business processes and, and, and big data. Um, Mostly because if you actually work in a small or medium-sized company today, there are, it was even worse in 2008, there are no processes that actually work. You end up running your business on the premise of whatever your accountant told you or whatever tool the guy before you implemented. So what we did, and brutally honestly, I mean, this, this, this process has been hard trying to build a financial small conglomerate with, with the 
with nothing but some good ideas, some code, and a, a quite a lot of followers on Twitter. But what we did was looking at innovation as it is, look at a lot of geeks and, and wackos who, who would keep coming to me with, with good ideas from mostly, I think, from reputation. And then looking at this 360 challenge, which it is to do any company, I think it's, it's also important to, to, to realize that I mean, it's, the, the idea is nothing. We know it's, it's, it's 360. You really have to understand your product. You have to understand how to get the right people. You have to understand how to buy the marketing, how to do the accounting. And I mean, really 360, build a business and, and also for the first six to 12 months, finance an operation that is only a dream. And the problem, of course, is often that this, the success takes, I mean, overnight success takes about five years. We, when we read about these startups like WhatsApp, whatever, I mean, it's been a long process, but we, 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 we tend to think that it's something that just happened overnight. So first of all, we, we take the idea and we take some, some fairly good ideas. The, the last uh, yeah, five years, I've only been playing mostly with, with, with our own ideas and, and managing them. But the idea alone is nothing. I mean, it's all about the team but it's also about the technology, of course, and implementing that, and a long range of processes that have to, to keep, I mean, you, you have to keep iterating, and we hear it all the time, these pivoting ideas like Airbnb, they had four launch parties because they, they didn't get it right the first three times. And I think then having the pitching skills, I, I see a lot of really good, ideas where the pitching is, I mean, you don't want to listen to this idiot who's talking to himself. So, so that, that part of it, of course, we're, we're playing a lot and, and helping a lot with that. But then there's a million other things like the reshaping, the idea, the financing, the team, the prototyping, the law. I mean, there's a lot of legal stuff when you, when you want to build these really global companies. And of course, the funding that you have to be able to manage the first failures. I mean, it, it's, it's a repetitive cycle and it's long and it's, it, it's what it's, it's where you have to show the stamina to really, I mean, see if you want to go there. And I mean, as it says in the last part, go to one. You have this probably on a monthly or a quarterly basis where you have to, to reshape everything. So I've been focusing, fo focusing for the last year on, on my own stuff with a lot of premises. So I, I was very lucky to, to help the guys at TradeShift to, to start their company in, in my basement. And I'll come back to that. And then I've been trying to form my, my own group, a little bit inspired by these humongous Korean groups where they, where they do mostly everything. But, but if you really start diving in, there are, there are some interesting synergies. I'm not sure I can build a, a Samsung, but let's see. Um, so I didn't really look at anything new, but I, I took these facts, which was the, f the formation. And we started discussing and discussing and acting on the fact that all these, there, there is a lot of enterprise marketing deals. And what I, what I mean with that, there's a, there's a lot of distribution advertising to do inside all these new software as a service products. I mean, the guy in here who would be able to invent a product that he could get into um, a company, I mean, a product like Dropbox and upsell in there if Dropbox would promote it I mean, he would be selling something in, inside a user base where, who, who's, who's already having their, their credit card running for, I think, 25% of, of the user base. So, so, so these enterprise marketing deals we've been looking a lot at. We've been looking a lot of, at all this digital media because when, when we're having this, this, this paradigm change to, to Google where everybody, even a fellow board member in, in one of our very interesting companies. Um, he's from UPS. He, he, he cut out one of the meetings and said, why are you calling all these? Why are you calling all these, um, these leads? Why don't you just buy them CPA on Google? And that's where we are. I mean, we, we're, we're in, a, in a world where the, the biggest businesses in the world, they're just using Google as their sales force, as their media for, for driving leads. But there is also some interesting changes in this paradigm because very soon you'll also have to consider to buy Facebook advertising. You'll have to buy something 
especially in the verticals of, of LinkedIn and, and Twitter if you're in the enterprise software. So we also looked at a lot of at, at the fact that, that a lot of businesses are becoming digital. And and not only I mean are we able to send emails to each other, but we're buying products that doesn't exist outside our computer. And if you look at the smaller startups now, there's been different predictions, but as, I mean, as even the smallest startups, they have to use around two, three thousand dollars a year on software as a service stuff that they need a A-B testing tool, they need some storage, they need, of course, all their Amazon services. I mean, it's, it's, real, it's real business. It's not just open source crap. And then on top of that, of course, we've been looking a lot into when you want to do enterprise stuff, you have to look at the, map, the, the, the mega trends. And, and Facebook is probably the biggest mega trend ever. And we have seen very few initiatives for businesses to go in to do enterprise solutions inside Facebook because there's some idiot in the top of the organization who says that he don't want to be on Facebook. Then the rest of the company can't use Facebook, which is, which is often a little bit stupid because it's a pretty good authentication tool to see that people really are who they are. I mean, how many in here have borrowed their Facebook account to someone else within the last month? I mean, you don't give your Facebook password to anyone. It's not like in the old days where you just gave your, borrowed your email to, for somebody to register a piece of software back when an app was an exit file. Facebook is changing the paradigm in, the, in parallel with, with software as a service becoming a, I mean, tools that, that really reacts and modifies themselves compared to our, whatever we lock in with, with, we lock in with Facebook or we lock in with LinkedIn. It, it, it's easier. I mean, it, you can't, it, it's stupid to, to build a tool without this capability. So, of course, also with the, in the, with the fact that social media is everywhere and you have a quite, in my world, lame company like Yammer growing to, to become a real player. I mean, it's, it, it looked lame when you, when you look at it from the outside, but it, it kind of changed, the paradigm changed a little bit when you, when you see how much information, if you can control it, that can be shared in an organization instead of everybody just having their own little silo and ensuring that nobody, I mean, touches their budget or whatever. So social is media to me is, is also everything because you'll probably have discovered already some, some really nifty services like the one I wanted to show you now with, with our Wi-Fi login. So whenever you come to a hotel and, you, and you're using our, our Wi-Fi login, then suddenly you will also see who's in the hotel that you know or who's in the, in the hotel that you know somebody who knows. And the same with the reviews, the same with all of this stuff. So, so social media is in, it's, it's, it's inside. The, one of the best services to me is TripAdvisor. It's amazing to go to, to Africa. We, I was in Zimbabwe with my kids. And I, I mean, you can log directly into TripAdvisor. You will know with certain validation what restaurants are worth eating at and will not kill your stomach. And you'll have a friend of a friend who, who did a review. I mean, it, it never happened before in history, and that's what I mean with social media being totally integrated to everything. And then I think it's important to, to see when we're, trying, when we're trying to do these companies that, then again, we're reshaping and, and doing all of it. So we were super lucky to be able to create an extremely high market value and, 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 and deal value on, on the companies that we've been setting up. It's still dead boring enterprise software, but it seems to work. So I'm also the chairman of, of Capital Aid, where we've been, I'll come back to that, been, been trying to, to use the, the big data. But, but right now we're trying to execute all these plans and the, the, the bigger vision be, be behind what, what we're trying to set up here, and it's getting a little geeky, but I think that's where the big business is, is that, yeah, we have to warn that how boring and complex it is. I mean, it's software as a service, it's big data, we all know big data, and it's social. But if you look at these, if you take these three things, or three paradigms, and, cha and, 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 and you're able to, and smart enough to put it into the to the day-to-day -day software, it's like trade shift, I mean, it's an invoicing service. It, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't get more boring. But then, it's also kind of vital for any company to have 
an invoicing tool, both sending invoices and receiving invoices, that is pretty accurate. And we don't do business with each other unless we send invoices. So big data or huge data has, will, will, will be part of everything, but it also, that we also need to have an understanding, even from a business management point of view, of, of these application programming interfaces, which is, we're probably getting there now to, to I mean, 20, 30% of the potential already, how to integrate weird shit on both sides. But, but even though you have an API, some people just, well, we can suck the data. You, you also need a really good algorithm to, to kind of play with this data or another pre representation layer where you can actually take crazy weird data from, from many sources that, where you can access the data with, through the APIs and then do new services. And yeah, connecting anything with any service is, is actually possible, especially if we're talking about the Internet of Things. And there's a reason that Google bought this little weird thing on the walls in the US called Nest. I mean, then they will also, they will not only have, you know, all our data from the, from the Android phones and where we are, search, read our emails. They also know the temperature in our home and whether there's a fire. And they, they also know with the map and, and here Google is using a little bit of this. So whenever you see that there is a line, especially in New York, it's, it's cool. So if you use the Google map, you will see where there, is a, where there is a line and people are stuck in traffic because they just look at the phones. If there's more than 50 phones who doesn't move, there's probably a blocking in the traffic. Pretty sexy stuff, if you look at it that way. <laughs> but pretty interesting stuff as a consumer, but you don't think about how it, how it actually gets done. It's just different things talking to each other via either a closed loop or, or, or APIs. So the big play that we were lucky to be part of is of course with TradeShift and it was very nice yesterday that we were able to announce that we raised $75 million in the third round of financing in the most boring company in the world. But that's probably because we add a lot of value. So another thing that I've been spending a lot of time on, which I've unfortunately fucked up, is trying to, to deal with the, with the infrastructure behind flight search. But yeah, we, for, for, many, for, for different reasons, didn't, didn't manage to agree in the shareholder uh, group to, to carry on, but we actually managed to build a full-fetched search engine so we would be able to serve you nice offers on travel in your email. Because if you think about it, you don't get personalized travel offers. That's because the industry is still locked up with Amadeus and Sabre charging the airlines $1 per search. Imagine how fantastic business Google would have if they could, if they could charge $1 per search. That's the old world and there's so much, there's so much room to, to really disrupt these huge industries because they're just fucking each other and you guys. So yeah, back to this Wi-Fi where we also want to connect the things, connect the dots between this weird box and the, and the fiber in, in, your, in your home or whatever internet you have, connecting it all the way out to your house, to your, I mean, to your door lock, to your light control. To, to everything around it and then give you the data back. Data back. So whether this is a, an Airbnb cabin or it's a part of a big hotel chain, we'd be able to, to, to serve you extremely interesting data. And then coming back to, to Capital 8. So at, with, with Capital 8, we, we found a way to basically help the small businesses. I mean, it's, it's super cool if you, can, if you can play with technology and at the same time become a little bit of Robin Hood. But what happened in, in the UK was we were super lucky with, with TradeShift to win the NHS as a client. So basically, if you want to send an invoice to the British health system, healthcare system, you have to use TradeShift. It will be by law. So you have to send your invoice with TradeShift to get your money. And then, of course, with TradeShift, we made it all free. 
because it's sometimes a pretty good way to get market share. And then when you then I get your acknowledgement that the NHS has approved your invoice, then we will be able to offer your, your payment instantly instead of waiting 60 days. So a dead boring financial play with a big impact for the small and medium sized British businesses who can't go to the bank, but maybe we can finance their next salary payout. So of course, with the name of this conference, it's interesting to, to see what's going to happen in within four years from now. I think for whatever it's worth, it's, it's interesting to, to, to think about that the, the, the mobile broadband and, and the overall broadband will be so much better, which will definitely change everything. Um, it will not only work sometimes, I think most of you guys have tried, suddenly you are in a perfect spot with not too many phones and you try the real like 50 megabit download on your phone. Problem is of course the phone can't really take it, but it, gets, it becomes a really good experience. That will probably be all over very soon that you have these experiences. Then I think we will be data hostages. Uh, I try it sometimes already where I don't want to give away, I mean, I don't want to you know, lock in with Facebook. I don't want to connect to services. Then they have no value. So if we don't have our data and we don't want to share it, Sometimes, quite, quite a lot, we'll, we'll end up being data hostages and, and, and there will be a lot of services that, that will be more or less forced to use. Just, I mean, but we have to give our data away in that way, I mean, the data hostage. You, to actually get into any service, a lot of the services, you'll have to just pump your, your data in the direction. That's probably a little scary. Um, then I think, it's pretty clear that, that this whole NSA thing was not, I mean, I, 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 it was not new to me. I've been working with the telcos through back, back when we did Skype, and we, I've been looking, working with the, a lot of governments who wants access to the, the data we suddenly saw NSA, NSA had access to. But on the other hand, it also saved a lot of crazy people from blowing up themselves that somebody has access to this. We, it's just a little bit weird when, when, we, when we start to understand what's happening. And of course, the Chinese guys, I mean, they already, they're probably hacking NSA. <laughs> so, so they also have access to everything. And then I think that we will have more and much more, but not perfectly, again, structured data. Because think about how, I mean, you're, many of you will be working in a company where you probably can't get the data you want because it's not structured. No, I mean, they're, they're not using the same reporting tools in, in different departments. There's no, there's no way to do the, the really interesting prediction calculations. There's no way for, for a lot of departments to talk to each other. So sometimes you end up with one of the nightmares of corporates, which is uh, that you have to get Accenture or some group in to do a, a big project and try to change your, your company. But it will be much better because we'll be using a lot of tools that will have these open APIs or they will have structured formats in their own um, data storage. Um, then I think for the entrepreneurs, the really, really interesting thing is that money might still be cheap for a little while. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's, nobody thinks about, well, there's a lot of talk about these tech stocks being too expensive, blah, blah, blah. Well, that, that's a personal, uh, everybody has their own opinion. But what I see from using a lot of venture capital and using a lot of, 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 of capital from different sources, I see that people with a lot of money they get more and more interested. And I think the best thing that happened for startups in many years was that, that WhatsApp was bought by, by Zuckerberg. Because if you have a billion and you get 0.2, 0.5% interest, that's probably not enough to pay your cost, a couple of houses, the three, four, five kids, all kind of shit that rich people have. 
So a lot of these people who are really rich, they'll have to start eating from their, from their capital. Then, they pro so, I mean, some, most of them probably made the money themselves or knew how to do it. So they'll start to take two, three, four, five percent of their money and throw it into something that could be a WhatsApp because, I mean, they're for sure not going to get any interest in the bank. And that's probably the best thing that happened for our entrepreneurs in a very, very long time. So if we can keep the interest, I mean, if, if, if the economy can, <laughs> I mean, survive and the interest rate will be this low, I think we're going to see crazy, I mean, crazy amounts of money being thrown at startups. And then we can always discuss whether it's, it's smart or, or not smart. I mean, companies that, 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 that money is going, that all the money is going to. But they, I, I just see it as, as a crazy, interesting thing. And I, I see crazy amounts of capital being now injected into the whole startup scene in the, in the hunt of some kind of return. Um, yeah, and I, as I said, I mean, th th this is probably the best thing. And, and overall, I think, I mean, the advice that I'm trying to, to give, even though I'm, I'm only doing really boring enterprise software now and there's no sexy stuff like Skype and Kazar and all the crazy stuff we did before, it's of course, I mean, yeah, just do it. And then remember that a, a leader without followers is just a guy taking a walk. I mean, there's a lot of idiots who does, shouldn't run a company. And I think that's, that's really important to, to keep that. So, yeah, that was my 50 cents. Thank you very much.